All right, man. So how are you today, Brandon Lombardo? Joining me as co-host of the show, another lovely Friday, the Friday before the 4th of July. Everyone, I hope you're having a great weekend. Does everyone get like a four-day weekend on this, Brandon? No. No, they don't because I don't. (laughs) <laughs> some people <laughs> someone out there does i get like a five day six day weekend. I feel like i feel like most people probably do um <laughs> we talk about you get a five day weekend you every day is a weekend that's not what true do you, what do you mean that's not true that's not okay. true i work i work mm-hmm. i work hard at my job i have to practice mm-hmm. i have to help with decision making i have this project this there is, is a lot there is a lot i know it doesn't seem like it i'm also raising a child and getting in there. fights with my wife which is what a lot of people do <laughs> Um, no, I'm just kidding. But yeah, it's, uh, it's, it, it, it's been a crazy week for me, man. Uh, I know we talked a little bit about it, uh, off the record here, off the air here, but, um, yeah, I just got back from New York last night. We were talking, we last talked on Friday. I mean, aside from text message, but we talked yeah. last Friday when we, when I was about to play, uh, Madison square garden. Um, and then, uh, we texted over the weekend, which was great. And then, uh, I dropped my phone in a koi pond. Well, I dropped my whole body in the koi pond, actually. No, so that's not. You did the Michael Scott? I like, you Michael straight Scott. up. I did the Michael Scott. It was Is not, there security not footage? Fine. No, I think. Uh, Dang. There, there oh, might man. be, but I didn't stick around to find out. So, uh, yeah, we could get into that in a second. But yeah, that was uh, not one of my finer moments. Kind of embarrassing. I don't embarrass easy. You know that about me. But I was. I was thoroughly embarrassed on this one. I was like, okay, yep, that's that just happened. I, Damn, dude. Luckily, Set the, the scene. Where were you? Like, how, how'd this happen? Oh, man. We're going to go right into it, are we? All right, uh, we uh, have to. I'm very curious. <laughs> of course you are, you motherfucker. <laughs> um, well, Sam's here, actually. Oh, like. All right, so come on, we, Sam. We'll bring, saved by the Yeah, bell. you're saved. Saved, saved for now. Hawk. Saved by the hawk. You think we're not going right back into it? I'm just hoping, man. Just hoping. uh the good news is though apple does make a a good a phone that actually does uh withstand water now like i thought it was kind of like resistant but it turns out it's actually um it's actually like pretty waterproof i I did try the rice thing um and that kind of worked i guess i mean all i know is that my phone works again that's like the majority of the story and we don't need to go into the rest of it brandon i think that's i'm very concerned about the positioning of sam's phone right now and what he was doing i have no idea what that was like sam just tried (laughs) to come into the zoom call (laughs) prematurely i guess i don't know what the hell he's doing but we'll see we'll see if he if he comes back that was like an under the desk shot like what why why i know why why was it why is his camera down there because i gave him one of these cameras like what is he doing below his desk when he's supposed to be at work with that camera you know what I mean? Interesting, interesting. Interesting indeed. It was his wife's birthday yesterday. Uh, happy happy birthday, Karen. Happy birthday, Karen. Um, so, you know, who knows what they were getting into underneath the table there. Um, but, yeah, I digress. How was your week, man? Before we get into my debauchery and, and, and debacles. No. Great no. job on the on the canned. Uh, see, this is how I'm going to butter up. Great job on the canned label for our new... Uh, Electric Melonade uh, Seltzer you. by Four Sons. It looks fantastic. Appreciate that. You're such a great that. artist and great person that I think we don't need to talk about the Koi Pond incident. So, <laughs> Well, I will give dues where they give credit where it's due. Thank you, Crystal Skulls, for throwing that name out there. Twitter, thank you for voting on that because, yep. honestly, I hated the name you presented, so I'm happy it lost. I liked, I liked the one I presented. I was it still was backing okay. I was still. I know. Here. Hey, you know what? The fact that you stand by it, that's you're true to it. And I like I'm that. I respect it. that. I'm true to but, a lot of things. But it's Koi Pond. <laughs> no, man. No. <laughs> Dude, come on, man. Like, how? <laughs> what time of the day? Where are you? What's the this lead is up? At night. What, this how? Was Sunday night. You know, okay. we got there Thursday night, had the show Friday night, celebrated with our good friend Derby Allen, who we got to talk hey, a, little nice. bit, a little bit about over the weekend. I'm still. I'm still not caught up, dude, so no spoilers. I know the pay-per-view has been out for almost a week now, but we'll get to why I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. I just got home late last night, so, uh, you know, with all the delays that was going on in Newark and everywhere in New New York in general and uh, all the airlines out of there, uh, delays, cancellations, you name it. I mean, I still got people. I still got 
you know, Brian and Michelle are still out there. So, um, yeah, man, it's, it's no joke. Um, so yeah, uh, that was, you know, night one hanging out with Darby and Nolan, Kentucky. Uh, it was a lot of fun, a lot of friends and family after the show, you know, it was a, it was a real, real treat and real great night. And then, uh, Saturday went and took the wife and kids to see a kid. I always say wife and kids because that's what everybody else says. It just like rolls <laughs> off the tongue. Wife and kid doesn't sound as good. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, so and then we went to see The Lion King on Saturday, had some dinner, did the whole damn thing. It was a lot of, it was a lot of fun. Um, so that was, and then we went, to, I went to a 40th birthday party for Brandon Saller. Happy oh, birthday, Brandon. Happy birthday. Nice. Um, uh, they rented out a bar. Him and uh, our other friend Gigi, also turning forty, like the next, the very next day, everyone was out. So there was a big weekend of partying, big weekend of partying. And uh, Sunday, we were out all day by the pool and brunching hard. And then we went to a restaurant called Tao out in New York. Beautiful restaurant, beautiful mm-hmm. restaurant. I mean, it's got a koi pond in the in the restaurant. Like you walk in, you look down. Like this is a massive place to be in Manhattan. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, uh, one point the kids were wrestling around over there by the koi pond. I was like, someone's going in, someone's going in. It's all of our kids around. And I wasn't expecting it to be me that goes in. So I went over there to like kind of handle the situation, but then kind of be nice. I was like having a good time with everyone. And uh, yeah, I just kind of stood up and I don't really even know how it really happened. Like it wasn't, it just, it just kind of happened. And I, next thing I knew I was, you know, in the koi pond fully like I fell all the way in like it wasn't like I just fell and caught myself in my and just went like knee deep or whatever like I went all the way in and I uh, was completely soaked I had to grab a tablecloth from one of the the nice workers there to uh put over myself to dry off a little bit before I uh got in a cab and got home so uh yeah it was uh it's quite the ordeal what was the reaction to Tao? <laughs> oh, Tao is a, that's a, we're talking a nice restaurant very right? nice very nice so- restaurant <laughs> You decide to take a plunge mm-hmm. in in this very nice restaurant. What, what's everyone else doing, man? Like, what's the reaction? Is there like shock and awe? Shock and awe at first. Look, a couple, definitely some laughter, of course. And you know, if I remember correctly, one of the guys helping me out did say he was like, "You know, you'd be surprised how many times it happened." And I'm like, "Would I? I? I doubt. I doubt it happens that often." I think he was really just trying to be nice. You know what I mean? I was like, yeah. "Son of a bitch!" You know that can't oh, happen that good. often. I was just so worried that one of the kids were going to go in. Um, totally. Yeah. And it ended up being me. So, you know, but hey, my phone's okay. I, I, I let it rest for a couple of days, put it in a bag of rice. I, would, I, I didn't want to chance it. They say that they're waterproof, right? But I didn't want to chance it and like turn it on right away and then have it fry and all that stuff. So I waited yeah. a couple of days, which was actually kind of nice because I just hung out with the family for Dude, two yeah. days in New York without a phone, which was, I mean, we had Lacey's phone, so it's kind of cheating, but like, you know what I mean? Dude, disconnecting from your cell phone is like one of the most relaxing things. Like maybe people, I don't know. I'm on my phone all day, right? I have to be for work and shit and it yeah, sucks yeah. and I hate it. So like every time a notification goes off, it like just makes your anxiety level go up a little bit more, a little bit more. Absolutely. So shutting it off and losing it. I always say, I can't wait for the day. I could just throw my phone off a cliff and never have to worry about it again. I mean, you could do That's that like, anytime you wanted. Really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No but like, I kind of need it. Yeah, I, no, I, I know. No one's going to actually do it, though. You know, I, I, yeah, I, I will. Get you. When I get my moat, it's going right in the moat. You know, so the problem there is I agree. I would want to do that, but not like forever. Like you wanted to go on a camping trip or anything. I just want to start taking serious amount of time. However many times a year off of my phone, like like a full week. It, yeah. It's just like. Especially like, yeah, I don't love going on social media all the time. I find myself going on it because, you know, you get bored and there's, it is a form of entertainment, of course. Um, but yeah, man, I go on there. I don't really love it when I'm done, you know? And, uh, but I, I mean, I like, I like some of it, you know, I like posting, I like seeing what other people are doing. I mean, posting for the show, we got to let people know who, who the guests are and who they're, who's coming up and who we've already recorded with. And I'm really excited about the one we're going to be dropping on Monday, by the way. Um, mm, very good one. Uh, we haven't recorded it yet. Full disclosure, we're recording after this one. Um, but we have a really great guest, uh, you know, and one that I think is completely out of the box for a lot of our listeners. Um, so, I think so too. Yeah. But 
I feel like a lot of our listeners are going to be like, oh, I know exactly who that is. Of course. I mean, everyone's going to, okay, we, we just tell everyone, on Monday, we'll be releasing our episode with Fred uh, uh, Armisen, uh, you know, famed from Saturday Night Live, Portlandia, Documentary Now. I mean, the guy's got a million projects. He's, he's the, the music coordinator for, on the Seth Meyers Late Show. Um, you know, he's, and I, I've, since we knew he was coming on, just the last couple of days, because honestly, I was so crazy in New York, and we'll get back to that, uh, just doing a little extra research on the guy, just so I, I have a little bit of background. I, didn't, I, I knew he was a musician, knew he was an accomplished mu- musician, knew, knew he was an accomplished drummer, um, seen him play guitar and sing and stuff before, um, but I never listened to any of his bands. And mm-hmm. I went back and listened to Trench Mouth, and... It wasn't what I was expecting. I don't know what I was expecting, but like from what I hear yeah. from him and everything, I guess I was thinking more traditional punk rock, I guess, is kind of what I was expecting. And I listened to it and it was it was not that. Sure, it's got flavors of punk rock in it for sure, but it, it was, I can't wait to talk to him a little bit about that because it is an interesting project. And I only saw one release on Apple from it from like 2003. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, they were active like 80s, right? 80s, 90s. And then he joined the like band a, in '88, I believe. Okay. And they only, and then they were active through the '90s. And I guess I didn't realize that he wasn't in, you know, what we all know him most for in the comedy and acting world until his late '20s, early '30s is really when he broke out and like kind of made the transition over, which is kind of later. But I mean, like our friend Dean Del Rey kind of did the same thing. He was in music yeah. for years, and in, in his early '30s, he switched over to comedy. And podcasting, let there be talk, which we were on earlier this week. Me and Matt uh, went on his show earlier this week, so really good, really good chat, really good chat, everybody. Go check it out. It's a good podcast. It, it is a good podcast, and Dean's a good dude. I like yeah. it. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, not to get too far off topic. I'm really excited uh, to have Fred on the show. Uh, talk to him a little bit about some of his fun projects that I know we're all fans of. I mean, I was just a huge Saturday Night Live fan, man. Like growing up. I mean, even even to this day, man, like I watch Saturday Night Live every week. It's one of my favorite shows, actually, to watch. Um, I know it's hit or miss, you know, the sketches, yeah. sketches that, that's comedy. though. That's sketch comedy. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Gonna, you're going to have your hits and your misses. And then but I'm excited to talk to, to tear his ear off about, you know, times on SNL. I'm sure he's done oh, that yeah. enough, but I, I, I got a fanboy out a little bit. I mean, the guy played Barack Obama for a couple of seasons. <laughs> like. Yeah. That's like, that's no joke, you know? Yeah. No, that, that's cool that you have the SNL angle because I'm a big Portlandia fan. And that's great because I've only, I do like Portlandia, but I've yeah. only watched a few episodes. I did not. Oh, dude. I didn't take the deep dive. Also, uh, Documentary Now, also a great show that I've only seen a handful of episodes on. Same. Yeah. You know? And, and then, I want to give that one a lot. I, I need to give that a good watch because I love that concept behind it. Like just these straight up just mockumentaries oh, and, and that came that had to have come from some of the skits that he did on SNL that I, I'm oh, yeah. just so curious as to how those skits come. It just seems like that was him. You know, sometimes the stories in, in Saturday Night live is that it comes from the writing room or it comes mm-hmm. from a cast member. And some of the times you just feel like Fred, like you could tell which ones Fred came from his yeah. mind looking back at it. Right. Yeah, yeah. 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 You could get his flavor, especially once you watch like Portlandia and you get his sense of comedy and, and, and that you could, yeah, a hundred percent. Tell that. Yeah, and some of the great, greatest cameos to some of the greatest uh, movies of all time too. Like, I mean, yeah. he has his own starring roles and everything. Not diminishing that, but the guy who owns the uh, the jazz the, the jazz flute place or whatever for Anchorman, he's the owner of of Anchorman. I was just watching it the other day. I was like, "There's Fred! No way!" He's like, "Come on and play some jazz flute," <laughs> and, he gets, <laughs> and he gets. Uh, Will Ferrell to come up and play on his date with uh, Christina Applegate. You know, it's uh, oh man, it's great. Just just some great times with uh, throughout that guy's career, and he's still he's yeah. still doing so much, dude. He's still doing. Yeah. He's busy. He was just on time. one of my favorite uh, Netflix shows. I think you should leave with Tim Robinson. So funny. Even before you sent that to me, I did recently watch that show because you and Sam had told me about it, and I saw said episode. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's so good, dude. Like, I need to make a video like that for Owen, where he sees me beating up a kid and he knows. <laughs> it's so it's so good and absurd. I do like that show, by the way. Now that you guys turned me on to it, I love that show. It's it's got a it's little off the bit wall. Yeah, it's got a little bit of Tim and Eric show to it. Mm-hmm. Um and but it's totally 
Tim Robinson's humor, who was also a SNL cast member. Um, yep. It's it's just so good. I, I do love the absurd absurdity of that show. He's like, and when Fred gets so mad about how you spent fifteen thousand dollars on this shitty ass video, it's so good. <laughs> yeah, I don't care about your stunt class. <laughs> It's so good. I can't wait to talk to him about that. But that's let's let's not like waste too much time on that because there's gonna be a full episode on all that. Everybody coming out Monday. Make sure uh, if you're a new uh, listener or a new uh, viewer, make sure you're following everything. Drinks with Johnny for that. We release stuff all the time and sporadically. Like we didn't even get one earlier this week, so I'd like to say this is a follow up Friday, but it's not. It's just the episode this week because. Uh, yep. We decide when we're going to stop drop stuff when we have it. So uh, <laughs> this, is what, this is what you get, people. Make sure you're following so you don't miss anything. Um, but yeah, uh, back to New York real quick because that was that was the shit show. Like after that, we had, we had, my flight was scheduled Monday. Go to the airport, watch it keep getting delayed. Already heard of other friends of ours trying to leave, saying, "Oh, dude, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough." And just fingers crossed, sitting there with my wife and kid. It's Newark Airport. There's not a lot in the terminal that we're at. Like, there just wasn't, there was, like, two restaurants. And yeah. A bunch of, like, little shack things and stuff. And it was, like, everyone's sitting on the floor. All the seats are taken because everybody's delayed. Everyone's getting canceled. It was, Nolan actually try, it slept in the airport for two, two nights. So I feel bad. I feel worse oh for God. him. Yeah, he said he slept in, I think, he, I think he said two nights. I was like, damn, dude. Why didn't you just, like, call it and go get a hotel? He's like, I just had to keep waiting and waiting for the next one. I'm like, that fucking sucks. Um, <laughs> but yeah, ours finally boards, you know, four hours late uh, at like 8.30. Goes out to the runway. We're all stoked. Well, okay, cool. We're one of the lucky ones that are going to get out of here. Sat there for two hours. I watched the entire movie of the new Ant-Man and Wasp, Wasp uh, Quantumania. Watched the entire movie. And then they announced that they had to go back to get more fuel. Uh, so they had to go back to the gate. They taxi us back to the gate. And by this point, everybody else is taxiing back to the gate and everything. They, they pause for more weather stuff. And then they go in and they come up on the announcement again. Well, there's a, there's a baggage cart in front of us that we can't get by. And uh, we got to wait for someone to move that. And we're like, I'm like, how does it take so long to move the baggage? But then I realize, like, in my head, I, I, at moments I start to think, just like a lot of people do too, like, oh, I know better than this airline that's trying to get it done. You know, like right. they don't want it. They cost them money every time they delay and cancel. So like, right. trust me, follow the money. They're trying everything they can, but they're just understaffed because there's so many delays. People, people fly, they do connections. My mother is a flight attendant, so I understand that side of it, you know, but I digress. Anyways, so that, that delays us again. Then by the time we're finally at the gate, they announced that our first officer has timed out. That now this is a legal thing. They cannot let a, a let a pilot or a flight attendant of any kind, any any of the crew, go past a certain amount of hours because it is deemed uh, unsafe at that point. So they they say we're going to try and find another uh, pilot while we're waiting here. Um, they said that they they can find one, so we should be okay. We're like okay, cool. And then they come back on and say, well now we're miss we're going to miss one of our flight attendants, so we need to try and find a flight attendant. <laughs> oh like, my god. Dude. And that one only took like 10 more minutes for them to finally just go like, and we're canceling your flight. And so they canceled the flight. We, Sam's, Sam's in here right now. So I'm going to finally admit him. See what he, yeah. so let's ask him what was going on under the table there. Yeah, um, that was, that was a little weird. Yeah. But I'll, you know, but I'll finish up that story by saying once I got off it, that, that flight was canceled. Uh, I went down to the baggage claim. I was like, all right, so where's our bag going to be? Because we loaded them on the plane. And uh, they're like, uh, if you're on only on these two flights, you'll get your bags back. All their flights, we're gonna keep your bags, and you'll have to come. You have to you know make a claim for it. And I was like, I don't even know what that means. This has never happened to me. I've never been on a council <laughs> flight before. So I go, I, you know. So me and Lisa are just like, fuck. So we grab one of the tags. We get we get back to the hotel. Luckily, I have a tour manager and a couple assistants to help me out with this. Most people are probably just like irate at this point. And they're like, what are you gonna yeah. do with my bag? And I'm like. I don't know, but it's not that important. I'm going to go to Target in the morning and get some new clothes and stuff. And that's what we ended up figuring out doing. But it was just such, it was so weird and bizarre. Now I still don't have my bag. That's why I've got like this, I don't know what you call it, 8 o'clock, 4.50 shadow, whatever the fuck this is going on. I don't have any of my like shavers and razors or anything like that. So this is what I got right now. Um, but yeah, so I'm still waiting on my bags. Luckily, I was on a backup flight for Wednesday. 
finally got that one. That one was delayed three and a half hours, but at least we still yeah. took off and got home, um, which is last night. I know we're releasing this Friday, but that was all last night. And anyways, I'm home now. Everything is great. Sam is finally here. He had to- I'm sorry, you're going to have to restart from the beginning because I, I just- <laughs> Just kidding. Actually, what you're going to need to do is turn that mic down a little yeah, bit. Yeah, dog. You don't need to turn that mic down <laughs> a little bit. You just, you just came in way hot. You just came in way hot. <laughs> I, I, are you using the correct mic this time? I don't know. Do, do I sound like I am? Yeah. yeah Sound actually, good? It sounds good. It was, just, it was just real hot. It was real hot. But you're doing yeah, good yeah. now. Um, I, I want to know, though, why was your camera down like under your desk towards your waistline? Right. A couple minutes ago. Well, I should take a picture of the... Uh, the ironing board I use to set my computer right at the right height under the camera. It's very technical over here. Guys. I remember those here. days though. This is great though. Cause I remember oh, yeah. what I used to try and pull to get, to get my camera and computer and screens all in the right spot. And eventually <laughs> yeah. I just broke down and like bought like a couple things that were totaled like 250 bucks and I didn't have to use shit like that anymore. Dude, you had like drum thrones with the TVs on them and we yeah. taped cameras together. It was okay. So <laughs> Hey, that was all DIY, baby. We were learning on the fly. <laughs> Something. <laughs> well, Sam, how was your week? We just we just discussed mine and how I uh, fell into the koi pond and was without a phone a couple days, pulled a Michael Scott, um, and then uh, was delayed on flights and had a had a hell of a week, as they say. And then uh, we caught everyone up with our episode that we're about to record when we finish here with Fred Armisen. And I'm uh, going to be releasing that on Monday. So, uh, yeah. We're, you're now all caught up on everything that you missed while you are on your phone call with your boss. So, uh, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, I bought a new car yesterday. So, I was oh, on nice. a work trip. And Whoa. I came home. My wife's birthday is today, uh, the 29th, when we're recording this. Yeah. And uh, Happy so, birthday again, Karen. We said that at the beginning of the show. Oh, thanks. Uh, I'll pass it along. But yeah, uh, so that was, I flew in, got home at like seven, and then she said she wanted to buy a new car tomorrow for her birthday. And I said, no one wants to spend all day in a, a dealership. So we went last night. So nice, man. <laughs> yeah, so we, I don't want to spend all day in a dealership. I want to go right before they close. So they have to like just finish oh, yeah. the deal. Yeah, it's a just smart, get move. It done. smart move. Yeah. But we knew what we wanted. And it's just so it's crazy how long it takes to buy a car. Like it doesn't it take just, as long if you don't. You, you just went old school about it, dude. If you knew the car you wanted, you should just buy it online. That's what I told. But whatever. If that's you know the car you want, you, you find it. You find it yourself online, pay for it and have it delivered. You don't have to deal with the. You know, the somewhat, I mean, they're not all, but the mostly slimy car salesman that, uh, yeah. you know, wants to sell you up on everything, chat your ear up, have you signed 10 million things that are totally unnecessary. And yes. Yeah. It's, it's, and it's Karen, Karen goes for all of those. So I'm, and this is her car. So she did all the research on it. She knew what she wanted. Everything, like you said, is online. And it's funny because they're like, oh, well, this, this. And I'm like, yeah, I, I already fucking saw it online. Like, thank you very much. I've done my research. <laughs> I already did the Carfax on it. I know yeah. where you got it from. Who yeah. made it? <laughs> and she goes, oh, I think we're getting a dealer instead. I'm like, yeah, I saw that online. Like, yes. Yeah. So anyways, we have a new car. She's happy. I wouldn't drive her old one. It was an old Prius. The paint was peeling. She had a cracked windshield and she refused to replace it. I said, from safety standpoint, it's like a hundred bucks. Can I just replace your windshield for you? She refused to spend money. So, so now, yeah, no, now just, we have I'm not going to spend money until I get a brand new car. What kind of car did she end up with? You don't mind me asking. Well, I, it, it's really weird growing up like the Kias and the Hondas and all of those while they're fine cars i couldn't bring myself to buy one but she started looking at the a audi a5 uh plug-in hybrid and then we were looking to really go for it but then my sister has an audi and she goes hey every time it breaks down it's just like any of those luxury cars you know just to do your brakes it's a premium you're gonna pay more on the long run and she rides her cars till they die so we end up doing a hyundai and i gotta tell you man Obviously, we're not being sponsored or anything, but those cars have everything you could possibly want at a reasonable price, and their warranty. We have a friend Mo who's actually in a in a commercial, like her. her she dad was said, back when she was in college. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and her dad said uh, they bought the warranty, and the car came with it. Um, well, it's an expensive warranty if that's the case, but uh, yeah, we got this <laughs> plug-in. Uh, hybrid and it's got everything it's a really cool car so it's a hyundai tucson or something like that 
Okay. Yeah. Well, congratulations well, to you and your family and Karen on her birthday and her brand new car. That is, that's amazing, man. Good this for has you. been Car Talk. This has Tracy been Car John. Talk, yeah. If anyone wa- has a car they want to sponsor here, just send us, uh, send us a link. <laughs> send, send us, us the car. <laughs> send us the car. And, you know uh, what's worse? I got to we'll say it. Right. So it we're in the middle. We'll, we'll have Darby come over and trash it some fun way. Ooh. I, I was in the middle of uh, negotiate or doing whatever, and I almost in the back of my pocket was like, "What if I threw out that I'll give them a shout out?" Uh, wow. <laughs> yes, if they give me give some us kind of a shout out from here, yeah. you better hook us up with some of that grease too, homie. Yeah, bro. Yeah. <laughs> that's hey, a three man operation. That's why I'm not man. calling anybody out right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's oh. fantastic. Um, yeah, so we're talking to Fred after this here, which is amazing. I was just in New York, which is a place that uh, he wasn't originally from, but obviously uh, he grew up there, a uh, young teen, and uh, I'm excited to ask him about his experience. He grew up in Long Island, actually, but, I mean, 30 minutes outside of the city, so he, he was a guy who went to the city quite a bit before he joined Saturday Night Live, all that stuff, which I'm, I'm a big fan of. Sam, we were talking about. Uh, you know, how Fred has been in so many different things and been a part of so many great projects and some of his own that he's created. Um, and I, my favorite, you know, my my initial stuff is from Saturday Night Live. I lean he- heavily on that of my knowledge of Fred. Uh, Brandon was saying Portlandia is his. Uh, where is your, um, is it one of those or do you have a different uh, avenue of, you know, your excitement with, with uh, having Fred on the show? Well, Saturday Night Live obviously is where we all first fell in love with him. But his characters on that, he is probably one of. I was thinking about it once. Once he was coming on the show, and my wife and I have several like things we say, and two of the things that we think is the most funny ever from Saturday Night Live is is uh, something he did. He was the mayor of New Jersey for a while. Did you guys ever see that one? I think yeah, no, I saw all of them. I just some and of he them was like cross-eyed and. On yes. the weekend update, he would like go yes. into the camera and run oh, into yes. it. Oh my god! And he'd always say New Jersey. So yes. every time anyone says New Jersey, it, yeah. I gotta <laughs> say That's that. Fantastic. And the other one, uh, he used to have a character who talk on again the weekend update, and he'd be like, "Who cares? Who cares? I don't know. Who cares?" And so like whenever my wife and I say that, we. That's Maybe great. Can. Yeah, yeah, I can't. Yeah. I can't wait to ask him some more about that. I know that's something that he probably talks a lot about, but uh, it's my show, and I really want to know more about that. So uh, we're going to get into into some of that, um, and uh, really excited for that. And then while you're on the show now, Sam, um, I just want to circle back to the New York stuff, and uh, we brushed over Madison Square Garden earlier with Brandon. Me and Brandon did it obviously in the episode last week where it was before, right before I went to Madison Square Garden for the first time. Now that I've been there since, I wanted to share with you guys quick little my my take on uh, the arena that is Madison Square Garden, which mm-hmm. I had so much time to uh, kill there. It was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, I won't get into why that was the case too much, but... Uh, our friend Darby was out there, Nolan, Kentucky after the show, uh, Dave from uh, Busted Open was there. I mean, we, we had a lot of friends, Brandon Saller. These are just like the celebrity friends and some of the other friends you guys know, too, that are family and friends. My mom was there, my, my stepfather, a bunch of cool stuff. So, um, yeah, just a lot, a lot of history out there. Have you guys, you've been outside. I know, I know Brandon's been outside because we walked by Madison Square Garden when we did the lost episode of the nft stuff because it's only oh, a few yeah. blocks it's only a few blocks from Times square so we literally passed by it um but yeah so do, do you guys have any knowledge anything from madison square garden i did the same thing i just walked by but my dad was a is a new york italian so like growing up we were knicks fans in our house so uh Gross. patrick ewing was one of my favorites and so beyond that i don't really have any other ties and then i always remember Andrew Dice Clay played uh, Madison Square Garden, and it was like a big deal for comedian to to sell that out. Yeah, it is. And then I remember he had a special where he went back and he was trying to sell it out again. I don't think he did though. But mm. um, but yeah, that's all. Not I everyone can it. sell Madison Square Garden, now, boys. <laughs> yeah, oh, <laughs> <kidding>. this guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, when you go there though, there's like other acts too that they have banners up for and stuff. Like Billy Joel has played has the uh, like the all time banner, I believe. I, I'm just going by the banner that they have hanging there. It's like he played. He's played there 137, 138 times. Um, I, ma- I imagine. I got to imagine they were all sold out. But uh, 
And then like Harry Styles just did 15 nights in a row sold out. Like there's, wow. yeah, like there's there. And then you go back and you go into these halls on every, I went, I went through the entire place that I was allowed to go to. I mean, there's some, some locked doors, but anything that was open, I, I tried it and went through everything I could. And there is really rad suites. It's, it's almost time capsuled, man. Like it's, it's really nice and they've updated for sure. But like still like the vibe is still very time capsuled in a way. Like, yeah, it just feels like old school, rich New York. You know what I mean? Very cool. What's uh, I know you sent a lot of pictures to us and went through yeah, them I all. Posted, like, I posted a few of them yeah. too. Well, what was Thanks your favorite thing that you saw That's like good. in the back there? I mean, like I said, the suites were really cool. Um, if we're going off of like the, the, the pictures I took and sent to you guys, like the, the display cases and stuff. I mean, Hulk Hogan's got to be up there. I mean, when they yeah, have yeah, WrestleMania cool. 1, Hulk Hogan, Mr. T, Rowdy Piper, Mr. Wonderful, Paul Arndorf in the main event at Madison Square Garden. It's so cool. And then just watching the Iron Sheik documentary a few weeks ago and after his, you know, his passing, uh, that's where, before WrestleMania, that's where in you know, 83 or 82, uh, Hulk Hogan came over from... Uh, what, what was he in before uh, the Minnesota Territory? Brandon, why am I drawing a blank? I don't know. It was AWA. AWA. Yeah, it was AWA. AWA. Um, he recently just come over and was coming over to fight the Iron Sheik, who is the title, the the heel title holder. He won his first WWF title that night in Madison Square Garden. And that just became, I mean, that was before WWF dropped the W and they were, and then, you know, and became WWF. They were WWWF. Um, so, and that was the first time Hulk Hogan gets the world title and that begot what we would know wrestling to be from that point on. You know what I mean? Like the eighties, it was Madison square garden was the place for wrestling through the eighties and early nineties too, which to me is so cool because obviously as our listeners know, and as you guys know, I'm a huge wrestling fan. So for me, that might've been the best one or I didn't realize that it was that venue that Marilyn Monroe sang uh, uh, happy birthday to President uh, John F. Kennedy. It was in that oh, room, you know, that iconic black and white thing where she's singing. And this, that was at Madison Square Garden, apparently. I didn't realize yeah. that. Yeah, I didn't know that one. Before we keep going on, what was the other W in WWWF? Worldwide. Uh, there you go. Uh, I made that up. I think that's what it is, though. And uh, they're like, you know what? Right. This little panda federation... We're going after them and we're going to match what they have. WWF. You know, they claim they never knew that. And I, I could see it. They started, they did that so early. The Panda Foundation, like the WWF, like really World, World Wildlife Federation, that became a thing in the 90s. Like for Yeah, I don't most remember it anymore. Are, but I remember when I was a kid all over the place. Yeah, had, we saw the commercials every, and I was like, wow, how do they have WWF? I was always like, wow, they really went for, for the wrestling company. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Turns out it was the other way around, but yeah. yeah, I mean, and then of course, and for me personally, as a Lakers fan, you mentioned the Knicks, so I got to I got to point out that uh, Kobe Bryant still has never played for the Knicks. Um, it still has the all time scoring record in that building, uh, at sixty one. <clears throat> Just saying, um, and that, I, there's a homage to that. It's small, so you got some like really big ones, and there's like this little one. Kobe Bryant scores sixty one points, and then. I <laughs> Because it, it wasn't a Nick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Oh, man. Mm. I also want to give a shout out. We did a, a, a Death Bat Club meet and greet after the show. Oh, some of, yeah, cool. and some of our, some of our uh, filthy animals in the Drinks with Johnny Discord uh, that, you have, that you have to be a member for uh, were there. We had Ross. We had Tuna. Uh, I'm trying to blank. Uh, Rachel was in there. There was a ton yeah. of them. You see in the pictures and stuff. And um, yeah, we were supposed to do our our monthly video chat with them last night and unfortunately with my delays and everything we weren't able to do that so we're gonna have to reschedule that but i just want to give a shout out excuse me to our uh drinks with johnny discord over there and for showing up and being a part of the wow that was my son uh part of the meet and greet um because that was that was really cool seeing everyone you know it's been a while i we, we've been doing this for a while now, but it's all been under the pandemic where I haven't been able to come out and see a lot of these guys in person. That was the first time I believe I met Tuna in person and Ross, who's Ross has been a member since like day one of the, yeah. of the, of the paid membership. So shout out to those guys. I also got a sweet Raiders hat from Ross. So thanks there, buddy. Hey, nice. 
But um, yeah, I guess your silence right there, guys, just says uh, we're pretty good on this uh, episode for <laughs> Friday, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna move on to uh, recording here with Fred Armisen. Everyone, go check that out on Monday. Thanks for joining us. Make sure you're following. Make sure you're doing all those wonderful, wonderful things. It help, really it does help the show. You know, selfishly, I will say it does help the show. But you should do it for yourself because you never know when we're gonna drop an episode where and where we're gonna do it. Sometimes it's just audio. Sometimes it's just video. Sometimes it's both. It's usually both. But you never know when it's going to happen. So make sure you're, you're current and everything like that. You guys got anything, Dad? No. Yeah, I got one more thing to talk about. Uh, have you guys seen the new Sports Illustrated covers? No. We got five no. minutes, and then we're, we'll cut it. Uh, they have Martha Stewart on the cover of Sports Illustrated. <laughs> what? No. We got yeah, to come back to that, actually. We got to come back. Yeah, we we don't have thing. five minutes. I just looked at the time. You're, you're full of shit. We don't have five minutes. All right. Let, we're going to go and uh, talk to Fred. <laughs> we'll come back to your Sports <laughs> Illustrated shit next week. Fuck uh, your story, <laughs> Sam. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I came in late, guys. There's I got stuff to reason. talk about. Yeah, there's probably right. a reason for Another it. We'll get, into it. we'll get into it next week. How about that? I promise you, next Friday, next Thursday, whatever it is when we drop it, we're going to talk about Sports Illustrated and AEW because by then I will have caught up and I know I missed a hell of a pay-per-view. We'll also be talking about uh, Virgil Ortiz has a fight July 8th um, on the zone uh, in Texas. If you're, if you're local to Texas, look, look for that venue. If not, uh, sign up for the zone and watch. We'll be watching. Uh, hopefully he gets another KO on his way to another to a, a, a serious title belt here soon. This one would, this one would put him in contention. Um, so fingers crossed. Shout out to the boy wearing the shirt right now, Virgil Ortiz Jr. on July 8th. So uh, everyone check that out. Keep, keep watching. Keep listening. We love you. Till next time, as always, cheers.